Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Diane Gutierrez, and this is my first premiere. So if you're watching during this premiere time, I'd really appreciate it if you write down in the comments and you say hello and tell me where you're from, because I would really love to know where everyone is from. Where everyone is from. So the reason I decided to have a premiere tonight was because next week on Monday, May 30th, Memorial Day, I'm gonna do my first live event. And I'm very excited, I wanna make sure I told everyone. And it's gonna be at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So do your time zone adjustments based on where you're at, but it will be 10 a.m. Pacific time. And we'll sit down and we'll create a page together. Okay, for tonight, since it's Try It Tuesday, this is a, um, a little series I started about a month and a half ago and I come on every other Tuesday and I find some kind of inspiration in the Creative Memories blog or on their website or on their Facebook page and then we recreate it together here on Try It Tuesday, hoping that I can encourage you to give it a try. So tonight, what we're gonna talk about is we're going to use the geometric frame punch. So this is a punch that came out last year, but then because of sh shipping um, situations, then Creative Memories had to take it out of their inventory and it just came back in. And so I was able to get one this time and give it a try and it's amazing. I think you guys are really gonna like it. So I found, um, I did find a layout on the blog that I wanted to give a try. So um, I'll bring you along as I try that layout. And then if you hang on to the end, you'll see some other ways that I kind of played around with it and um, ideas that I saw online. I gave them a try and there's so many useful ways to use this punch. It's very versatile. And I wanna show you a few examples of that at the end. Okay, so let's go on over to my desk and we'll create that layout. Okay, so here we are back at the table, and like I mentioned, the layout I wanna to do today is using this geometric frame punch, and let me show you a picture of what we're going to do today. It's right here. And I found this on the Creative Memories blog. It's such an easy layout. It's gonna be super quick for us to do today, so hopefully you, you can follow along. So. What I'm going to use for my layout today is these Tonally Tonal Blue and Green duo set. And Karina Memories brings these out. They bring them out in a limited edition and they only have them available until they are sold out. This blue green one is right now sold out. And I think as of the time I'm vid videotaping this, there's only three um, packs of Totally Tonal duos left on the website red and purple and can't remember the other color if it was yellows or something but so next quarter they will be coming out with another one so if you like them you need to grab them right away but the papers I'm going to use today are well first I'm going to use a blank white cardstock okay pretty standard cardstock and then I'm going to use this turquoise this dark turquoise paper as the base for my layout and then um, I have a couple of scraps here. Now this one I have already cut into the sizes that I need, but I kept this around in case I want to use the back side for matting. And then I also pulled this one out for matting. So let's get right into it. We're going to start by taking our white cardstock and we're going to use the geometric frame punch to punch a frame around this white cardstock. Okay, so this is a 12, 12 by 12. And because we're gonna do a frame, we're gonna use the guide on the outside over here, the silver guide, and we line our paper up to that and make sure it's lined up to the, the silver line here and then hold it in the back and push down. Then you slide it and you continue punching just like you normally would any other one. You slide, you match up the picture over here and you continue. So I'm gonna put you on fast forward and continue punching a frame all around the sides of this white cardstock. So I didn't fast forward as, I, as fast as I normally do, so I wanted to make sure that I paused and pointed out. You probably noticed each time I got to a corner, I turned it, took the corner piece and lined it up against 
the uh, silver line and that's how we make a frame with the punch okay with any of the frame punches they all work the same so to continue with our layout then we're just going to take our dark turquoise and put it right under this frame so this was a 12 piece a 12 by 12 inch piece and you could see once it's punched out it lays beautiful it lays really beautifully on top of the 12 um the 12 inch background now if you really wanted to and i might actually just do this you can go through and gut out some of that center so that you can reuse it on another layout okay so before i did here i might um consider doing that okay so now to continue with um the layout where it requires two frames you see one up here in the top left hand corner and then one down here in the bottom right hand corner so let's start with the one down here and again we want to do a frame so we punch out according to the silver line okay i'll put you on fast forward and i'll get these two frames cut out okay so let's put our paper back together now a couple of things um, i wanted to mention so when i started with the big piece this was a six by six inch square and the smaller one was a four by four inch square. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that beforehand. And then I was showing the green side as I was cutting because um, I thought it would stand out more. But on the page, I think I'm gonna actually use the striped part because I want it to kind of be a little more subtle for these edge pieces. So if you look at the um, inspiration piece, it kind of just flows with it. You kind of have to take a second look to see, oh, how did they do that, right? Okay, so let's talk about the pictures that I'm going to use. Okay, so I have three photos. I'm gonna keep it very similar to what they used on the inspiration sketch. So they have like a long one here, and they have a horizontal one there, or one that's cut, and then one small one right there. I, I normally do not show the faces of the children in my photos, on my layouts, especially if they are not my children um, and I don't have permission to show their face. But um, I wanted to make sure I'm telling you, even though you can't really see their faces that well, I'm making this layout to take to a uh, craft fair or um, it's more like they call it a maker's market and I'm setting up a booth there. And I've done several of these events and um, to promote creative memories. And uh, I usually have a photo album there with my personal photos in it to show examples. But what I've noticed is a lot of times, whoever's hosting the craft fair, um, they go around and they are using social media to attract people to come to the craft fair. So they're just taking video camera you know, photo, footage. And when they come to my booth, I always feel a little bit awkward because I have um, you know, opened my personal photo album open. So I'm creating some, I guess, um, alternate layouts to put into my book. And then, so the pictures of the children that we see here are from a site called pexels.com and they're all licensed photos. I feel like these are already on the internet, so there's really no need for me to be hiding the faces of, um, of the children, okay? So that's going to be my layout. Now in this square, when I have a, a six by six piece of paper, a three and a half by three and a half inch photo looks really good there, but you can see the outline of the frame. Okay. You can still see a little bit. It looks like a photo mat. A three by a three by three is even shows more of it, but a four by four, I think covers a little bit more than I want, but that's what it would look like if I um, used a four by four. Okay, so now I just have to decide how big or how small I'm going to cut this one down to. So let me bring in my personal trimmer. Let me scoot this over just a tad. Let's see what a four inch one, will, a four inch picture will do. Okay, so it'll be like that. Okay, I do think I want it to be a little more trimmed down. So I'm gonna go with the three and a half. I'm just taking a quarter of an inch off of all sides. Let's see if I wanna take it off of this side. A little too close to the little boy there, so I'm gonna come back to this side and take the whole half inch off of this side. There you go, that's what I'm gonna do. Cute photo, right? 
Now for the photos I have left, for this one, it looks like they used a four by six photo. So I'm going to bring in this blue and map my photo on this blue. So I am gonna trim this just a tad. Um, I'm going to trim it down by a quarter inch on all sides, three and a half by five and a half. Now, unfortunately, I have to use my 12 inch trimmer. I try not to use my 12 inch trimmer for photos, if at all possible. Okay, well, so now that I did that, it almost fits diagonally. I'm gonna make it fit so I save paper and just trim down a little bit more. Yep, there we go. Okay, and there's that one. Cute. Now for this one, they used, it looks like about a four and a half by four and a half. Let's see if we could figure out what we like. I'll take off a little on this side to kind of match it up. That's about, yeah, I think I'm going to keep it like that because I like, I don't want to cut off the top or the bottom. Okay, and now I'm going to bring back in this green piece and we will give this a green mat. Okay, there we go. So it's going to look something like that. Yeah, let me adhere what I have down and then I will come back and we will do some embellishing. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and everything's adhered down and in the places that I that I want. And I just I just love how this flows together. It just very subtly goes into the background in both areas. And I did cut out the back of the paint of the dark turquoise. So this is about a 10 inch cut that I can now save for a future project. Okay, so what they have in um, the inspiration piece is a border sticker right across the top up here. And so I pulled out a few is I have some leftover stickers from a pack. I believe this one was called um, Shine Bright. And I think I like those dots and easy. Easy is what we're looking for here, right? And yeah, I like that. I'm gonna go ahead and stick that. Touch one side and hold it. Here we go. There. Okay, that's nice. The colors match really nicely. Okay, so up in this corner, I would like to keep it very similar to what they did. Okay, let's move that up. Okay, so they have a sticker that could be a title. I have more stickers from the Prismatic um, that I think fit very well with this. I love this one. It says making memories and the colors are perfect. The one that says laugh is also a good one. Yeah, I'm gonna put that up on some foam tape. Okay, so I have that on foam tape. It fits really perfectly right inside the center of our little frame there. So that's cute. Then I want to add a couple baby kind of things. So I don't have a lot of baby photos to, to print and scrap anymore, not yet, until I have grandbabies. So I had to really dig into my stash to try and find some, some stickers here. I don't want anything with words because I have that already. I have this old Creative Memories sticker set that has some baby bottles. Hmm some rattles. I'm not really feeling that it's a really babyish theme going on here though. I have some old die cuts. Have you seen, do you guys remember these? I could put like a block right there because he is playing with some toys in that photo. Hey, okay, so yeah, we. I really had to dive into my stash here. I was mostly looking for some blues and some greens. I feel like it's very blue heavy. I did have this older Creative Memories sticker as well. The little lamb is kind of cute, actually. I do like the lamb. He might be cuter on this side. Move everything to that side, maybe. Let's see. 
I do have a green star. Let's put that up there. Let's see. Let's move it back to this side. Yep. I like the green star. I do like that. Okay. And then hmm, let's think about the lamb. And I took this out. I didn't like it after all. Okay. Let's move on down here for a minute because I think what I'm going to do down here is put this one sticker that says laugh. And again, I'll put that up on some foam tape and then it'll go something like that. You know, this is where we could put the little lamb. He's facing the right direction now. I kind of like that. I want to get this hat in. So maybe up there or maybe something like that and then bring my star down a little bit. That's kind of cute, right? It's a very flat sticker, so it won't pop up much. These stickers here. Oh, I like the frog. Let's move the little lamb. And how about put a frog? He's really cute, right? There we go. That's super cute. Yeah, I like that. And let's see what else we have on these that we might be able to use. I do like this turquoise star here. We have a little green one. Kind of brings your eye around like that. Let's see what else we can do. I like this area. I think I'm good there. Still missing something up here. I'm thinking maybe a heart right in the middle of our star. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so then over here on our inspiration piece, they have some words. I really like that idea. So I pulled out some word stickers. I might pop these, I might put these up onto some scrap paper to kind of pop them out a little bit. I like this one that says the little things. I like that one. Let's put that right there. And I like this one that says happy day. These are just, when I had a bunch of extras and cutting down sticker sheets, I started to put them all around. I actually like this one too. It says my very favorite and I really like the stars too because I have stars in the other clusters so let's see here let's see yeah I like those too put this one back and they had a heart right at the top which I did have a heart I wanted to use and something like this okay so I'm going to scoot everything over just a tad and bring it down I want the heart to be even with this open area right there. And then I'll bring these down. Now these two, I'm gonna pop up on to some foam tape for sure that one. Now this one is a clear sticker. So I think what I might have to do is put it onto some cardstock first and then um, pop that up as well. Okay, so there we go. There's my layout. I'm gonna add a little bit of some kind of journaling right here. And that's it. I like it. It came out really nice. Um, I think it looks really similar to the inspiration piece. I hope that you guys like it. I hope you give it a try and um, remember to use that geometric frame punch. And then, like I was talking about in my intro to this, I wanna take a moment to show you a couple of other things. So we just used it like a frame, but it can also be used as a border. So here it is as a white border, and it's very pretty, right? You can put that at the top of a page, you could put it down at the bottom of the page. Um, very, very nice. Here it is punched out with some pattern paper, and I just thought, that was just so beautiful. This is um, an orangey, very vibrant piece of pattern paper that it, I just think it looks fabulous on. Okay, so there's that. And then here it is, double punched. So once on top and then once on the bottom, and it makes this circular border, which is also really pretty. Here's one more other design. So this, it's a heart, and basically what it is, it's a punch out of two of them and then you turn it around and put the bottom part in. So very, very nice. Let me know if you wanna see any of those done in a separate video, uh, but that I just wanted to show you how versatile this punch is, not just for frames and for borders, but for some other unique 
type um, of borders too. Now with this one, depending on how big you make it in between, you can make it wider down the center and put some border stickers or something else in there as well. Okay, so that's um, a wrap for today's video. Bring our, bring our layout back in. And like I said, I hope that you guys give this a try and especially give that geometric frame punch a try. Okay, that's it for today and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Welcome to my channel. My name is Diane Gutierrez and this is my first premiere. So if you're watching during this premiere time, I'd really appreciate it if you write down in the comments and you say hello and tell me where you're from because I would really love to know where everyone is from, where everyone is from. So, the reason I decided to have a premiere tonight was because next week on Monday, May 30th, Memorial Day, I'm gonna do my first live event right here on Facebook. And I'm very excited. I wanna make sure I told everyone. And it's gonna be at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So do your time zone adjustments based on where you're at, but it will be 10 a.m. Pacific time. And we'll sit down and we'll create a page together, okay? And for tonight, since it's Try It Tuesday, this is a um, a little series I started about a month and a half ago, and I come on every Tuesday, or no, sorry, I come on, I come on every other Tuesday, and I find some kind of inspiration in the Creative Memories blog, or on their website, or on their Facebook page, and then we recreate it together here on Try It Tuesday, hoping that I can encourage you to give it a try. So tonight, what we're gonna talk about is we're going to use the geometric frame punch. So this is a punch that came out last year, but then because of sh shipping um, situations, then Creative Memories had to take it out of their inventory and it just came back in. And so I was able to get one this time and give it a try and it's amazing. I think you guys are really gonna like it. So I found, um, I did find a layout on the blog that I wanted to give a try. So um, I'll bring you along as I try that layout. And then if you hang on to the end or fast forward to the end, you'll see some other ways that I kind of played around with it and um, ideas that I saw online. I gave them a try and there's so many useful ways to use this punch. It's very versatile. And I wanna show you a few examples of that at the end, okay? So let's go on over to my desk and we'll create that layout. 